G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video on this rifle in front of us. Um, it's been a bit of a process with this one. I think I've probably gone to where it, the fruition of that project, uh, but it is the 50 BMG um, and I should say the ELR BMG. So extreme long range 50 BMG project. Um, I've done quite a few videos on this and it's certainly been through a lot of an evolution. Um, it started with some very good components. Uh, it started with what you're looking at in the way of this Dolphin gun chassis, a Barnard action, had a different barrel back then. It was a, a true flight barrel. Um, it was a little bit shorter. I think it was the 33 inch barrel. Um, but my custom made muzzle brake um, using a big bag base, and then end with a with a 60 MOA Barnard rail on the top of it, um, and the Night Force Attacker, which I've run various ones up here. But it sort of sort of started in that format, and I did a lot of learning. But I suppose I'll go back to the beginning of what I was up to to explain what I'm at, and, and I'll try and skip over things. There's lots of videos that go through all these sort of details, but I want to put it together in a in a fairly concise, um, reasonable time video. Um, Started with the project of as a 50 BMG challenge, 50 BM, 50 BMG ELR. So get out to two miles where the 50 BMG um, should create a lot of content, should create a lot of views, um, should be very interesting for the channel. Um, was one thought to it. The the real motivation was once we started to shoot ELR for a while there. Every tenth comment was, "You should be using a 50 BMG." Uh, was following the myth that if if big, if a decent size round or a big round is good, then bigger is better. So uh, the king the of the of the long range sniper round was the 50 BMG. A bit of myth, a bit of there's some fact, I suppose I say to go with it, but largely that's myth, rumor, and innuendo. And I suppose to to finish on that one. You know, the guys that have the normal rifles, and I, whether that's the Barretts, uh, the McMillans, or the other rifles that are in that 30 to 40 pound range, which tends to be what they weigh, then you'll tend to find the guys who are honest with them that shoot them will tend to about talking when they shoot them at extreme long range. They talk about a vehicle size group is what they actually achieve rather than sniper accuracy. The sniper word's a bit of a grey one to talk about, but you talk about the two or three MOA is sort of the, the best they tend to sort of run at, um, and a lot of them are a lot worse when you come down to a light rifle or a semi-automatic rifle and that sort of stuff. It's a bigger group, but hey, listen, it suits the nature of what a 50 BMG actually operates like. It is a Browning machine gun round. It's made to put a pattern out there with a boom, 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 is what it was designed for, whether that was on a turret or whether that's out of the wing of a plane or wherever that was. Um, like I said, it's a little different than a sniper round in that format, but all those things being said, still a great round. Let me carry on with what I actually did to get to this place. Started with decent gear. Um, right from the beginning, one of the problems that I saw in, in the normal tactical style rifle, so the likes of shooting off a bipod and that sort of stuff, was guys trying to shoot in the dirt and the conditions that I do in, so not in a F car setup, not in a with a skid pad or that sort of stuff, but shooting off a normal sort of bipod was the bipod would be skidding backwards and they had to push it back forward and it was skid backwards was part of the inaccuracy problem. It's because there's so much recoil out of a big round that you're going to run into where an unstable footing for your bipod was part of the problem. So right from the beginning, I started with a little bearing system, which is what you can see at the front here. I did it in various formats. This is where that ended up. I did it with various styles of bipod and bits and pieces. This is where it ended up. What we have is now is the, it's a 5H, um, Atlas bipod that I've modified slightly to bolt to my bearing system and it has some big solid legs which I'd sell in my store which make it grip to the ground really nicely. All things that I found worked well for me. I then ran this this sliding rail which is the way this thing actually works is it has this sliding bipod system up the front here so you can preload, it goes boom backwards and forwards, the feet stay grounded, all pretty sensible. And really this is the only rifle I use this on, but I certainly found it helped keeping things low, keeping things um, 
the, the bipod gripping, but with this feature, I also get to preload as well and shoot the way I want to shoot it. So that's what I ended up with there, um, with the bits and pieces inside it. I did, at some stage, put even more weight into it and got it higher and all sorts of stuff down the back here. Ended up with just a heavy bipod, uh, a heavy, sorry, bag rider in the bottom of it, and this spacer on the back here, which is solid steel underneath the cheek rest. Um, that was a little bit about weight. Um, really what it turned into was about making sure the butt pad had strength to be able to keep that line of push straight through here uh, by making it so it wasn't sort of bending over the top here, but just made that really nice and strong um, to deal with the recoil. Um, the trigger is the Barnard trigger. It's down at one pound, which is super light for this sort of rifle, but still works well. And I suppose my, my muzzle brake, I designed as a angle back one. It, do, it does a very good job and I'll get into the recoil in a minute. Um, the rest of it with the scopes and the rail and that sort of stuff, all straightforward. I just ended up putting this extra little bit on the front here to run the different Ford optical um, systems, be it the Charlie Tarak or be it the Knife Force Wedge or the, the, the Tarak Wedge. Um, different systems on the front here because it is still a fairly slow moving round. The best I got to was around the 2700 feet per second, which means for the ELR stuff, there's still a fair bit of time oh, in the air. And yes, <laughs> the big ones get affected right. by Let's the go. air just as much as the little ones is the truth of it. It's, a, it's big, so it's heavy, it keeps going, carries energy, but it's big, so it's a sail, so it gets pushed around by the wind a lot. So just as affected actually in the wind side of it, which is part of the nature of what the 50 BMG is about and one of its issues. But with all that, it really got to the point where the last time you saw it shooting, it really was under one MOA group, out at over two miles, performing really well, and moving into the place where um, I think it's more about how I hold my mouth. It's more about luck than about, um, uh, than, than about um, actual trying to increase accuracy. I have, I think, as much accuracy as I'm going to get out of this platform, with this round, given the nature of what, where things are at. So let's get a little bit more into that um, as to what I did to find accuracy. All these mechanical features and setting things up and working things out, my big bag base and all the bits and pieces and my form are very, very relevant and did a lot of work to take something from normal to above normal to get what's going on. Yes, your form and, and your load, all that sort of irrelevant. And I suppose the, the, the other bit that I found and what I was really looking for, which isn't really out there in any, great, in any level, um, <laughs> in any normal level, I should say, or easy, easy rocks to turn over and find, was actually an efficient bullet. The core of the 50 BMG and where most people are using it in the, in the military side of things, in the ball ammo and, the, and that sort of ammo, um, it's not um, very efficient ammo. It doesn't travel through the air very efficiently. It's heavy. Uh, but it's also fairly stubby, which means it doesn't have a brilliant ballistic coefficient for the size of things, which means it's slowing down quite rapidly, although the weight and the energy of the round is carrying it forward. It's, it's quite got a lot of drag to it, so it's slowing down because of the air. And yes, it's affected by the air just as much. Um, the, the nature of probably the best round I found in the off-the-shelf off -shelf rounds, which is actually very good for what it is, is the A-tip, the Hornady A-tip. Most of the other stuff I found was simply not as efficient. The A-tip's a very well-designed bullet. It is still a constructed bullet, still pushed together. It's not as uh, quite as refined in its consistency as a very well-done um, machined or monolithic bullet, so in the, the CNC bullet but it's still a very good bullet. I found it a, a very, very effective, um, or I should say efficient and worked very nicely. One of the better ones I shot with. But in saying that, I wanted to improve on that. I wanted to go above that. I tested, this is just a small range of the different projectiles that I tested um, and found most of the ones that were claimed more were actually less. They were less efficient. Um, so they took more MOA to get out of the target, which is more time traveling, which means more wind affecting and that sort of stuff, which ultimately makes them less than consistent. And um, there's quite a few videos of showing that sort of stuff off and where I found efficiency. But ultimately what I found for me, for what I wanted to do, keep in mind I was, start off, I was working with the barrel I had, which is a true flight barrel, a very good barrel, but one in 15 twist, the normal sort of twist. Um, and really of a monolithic bullet, they started to struggle to get past the 750 grains. 
Um, oh, and in the super efficient, where I ended up designing a projectile, which I ended up at the 802 grains of projectile to get the shapes I wanted, which is these three here. They're my projectile ones I designed, and I ended up with a decent about more efficiency. Ended up um, well over the one um, G G1 ballistic coefficient. Um, but found that really I'd lost a little bit of consistency because they weren't quite stable enough. They weren't tumbling, they weren't destabilizing, but my assumption at least once you're running minimum stability is that the long range stuff, you end up with a, a little bit of a wobble about them and they're not holding dead true. And that little bit of a wobble about them is what causes inconsistent elevation points. So you end up where one BC is worse or better than the other BC of the shot after shots. So you end up with some inconsistencies. Um, so this barrel went to the KSR, which is a 1 in 13 twist in a 36 inch barrel. And that really brought all that back in line. We started to work very nicely on that sort of level. It started to do all the right bits and pieces. Um, and we ended up with um, these. Well, that group you saw there. I went out three times. I had problems every time. The first time I went out to test it, which is uh, over a year ago now, I actually had the Charlie track on the front here and it came loose. And I didn't realize what actually happened through my shoot. I'm only firing off X amount of rounds because they're expensive rounds and because the 50 BMG, but it was not quite consistent enough. And I realized at the end of it that the Charlie track was loose. Next time I went out, we went horrible mirage, terrible mirage, which means you're not necessarily seeing where the target actually is. So your aim point could be wrong, which means that. So anyway, excuses, excuses. The last time I went out was just a couple of weeks ago um, and you saw what it shot like. And I was really, really impressed with it. Everything was very consistent. There were no erratic heights, no erratic elevations. Um, I was just missing the target, like you saw, just missing the target. But really, ultimately, it comes to the point where I believe that's about the accuracy I'm going to get out of this rifle. Now, I mentioned about weights and that sort of stuff. This rifle ends up at around the 36 pounds. By the time you put the bipod system on it, um, the heavy um, bag rod and that sort of stuff, you're moving into 40 pounds is what you're talking about. So it's still a decent weight rifle, but it is about the third the weight of a very, very accurate 50 BMG. So I, I think with the amount of recoil, the amount of setup and all that sort of stuff, that's about as accurate as it's going to be. So listen, I'm still super impressed with it, very happy with it um, beyond this point. And I suppose I do tend to stop at the point. Well, listen, we'll see how we go in the way of getting out there and, and, and doing it again through target. When it's got to a point where I'm using luck to get to the target, I tend to hesitate because what are you trying to prove? I've sort of seen a group of what it shot like. I'm super impressed with it. The actual getting, getting on steel turns into luck just becomes almost being dogmatic, but we'll see. And I suppose I should touch on people are going to ask, um, what is the deal on legally? Where are we at? Are they being confiscated and that sort of stuff? Listen, I don't know. The honest truth is, is where we're at in Western Australia on our laws at the moment. Um, this was all legally done under manufacturer's license they have sort of made noises of that they have stocked that side of things in some fashion they haven't there's no actual written legislation as yet um, is so it is a the balls are in the air on that one at the moment so i don't know where it sits um, we've got out there and done the shoot we wanted to do with this we plan to um, make sure that we keep it in some form or other um, but i don't know is a simple answer and really trying to push that button to get answers is blood out of a rock um, so eh, listen, once again, that's a bit of dogmatic, being dogmatic as well. Um, we're uh, being part of the fight to try and make our system make sense and try and make sure that, that, that um, as much as we possibly can, in a, in a, even in the situation we're at, that things do end up where there is common sense applied. Yeah, sounds like a lost cause, I get it, but a simple answer they don't know and, and there certainly are things afoot to try and make sure that um, to see if we can keep some rights on that sort of level. Anyway, I'm not going to go further into that one. That's where I'm at. I don't know where it's at. Certainly one of the things I should explain on that front that I have decided to do uh, as for my channel is when I'm shooting the big stuff to go through and explain in the front of the video each time what I'm actually doing makes sense for, for everyone. Makes sense of the people who are concerned about that. They can see the, what's up there and the people asking questions is there. It's just being um, I suppose conscientious about things and trying to be part of the of the fix or part of the cure rather than part of the problem. 
Anyway, that's about that one there. I'll get a bit more into, I'll do another video on the BMG and some of the, I suppose you'd call it myths that are attached to what the 50 BMG is. Um, but listen, it's been a great exercise. This thing is really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a monster. It, it, I don't carry it around in the 40 pound format, by the way. It, this one is too long to fit any gun cases, that sort of stuff. Four simple bolts off the bottom here, a proper V-block mounting on the bottom here, so very nice mate up. I pull this plate off, I pull the action out. That goes into one case, the other bit goes in the other case. That's how it travels. It is an assembly thing. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's not the type of thing you're trying to fit anywhere or carry around one arm if you, if you can avoid it. But that's that one on the 50 BMG and our 50 BMG bullet and um, it's been a great exercise. I still have to do more. Um, I'm hopefully getting another 416 barrel to sort out the 416 things because sort of running the same thing in the 416 bit. Um, because this rifle, all the work that's gone into building this 50 BMG, by the time you put in a true sniper around the, 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 the 416 Barrett, it becomes a yeah real pleasure to shoot, um, a very powerful pleasure to shoot. Um, anyway, that's that on that one. I hope that makes sense. Um, there is lots of other videos to look at for more information. I'll list the components down below in the video. Uh, beyond that, um, thank you very much for checking in, and we'll catch you next time.